The purpose of this video is to guide you through the process of creating a very simple application. All this application does is it has a text field in which it accepts a file name. It has a go button and we type a file name in here. Say I'm going to do something. And this file could be uh, could be anywhere in your file system. Okay, and so now I'm going to say go and it's going to display that file. And so if I type in another file, uh, here let's go ahead and type in this. And I type go, here's a local file, okay? So that's what this is going to do, and the quit button is going to make it go away. So that's, that's the application we're going to create. And I have here pretty much a scratch um, window with not a heck of a lot in it. And what we're going to do... is we are going to create, oh, this application pretty much from scratch. So we need to start thinking about what we want to do. What are the discrete tasks that are involved? And we want to make sure that start doesn't become a great long method, hydra headed, doing many purposes, we want it to be a pit conductor. So that means we are going to farm things out to other methods. Okay, so one thing that's kind of obvious that we definitely want to do is when a file is open, we want to get the file contents and we want to return them as a string. That seems like a discrete task that can be done by a private helper method. So I'm gonna go ahead and stub that method in. Okay, and if we might decide we wanna change its uh, composition, but for now, we have a pretty good idea here. Private string, get file contents, open parentheses string, file name all right and for now I'll just put a return empty string in to stub that method in so my program will, will continue to compile okay so that's one thing we might want to do separately oh the other thing we're going to do in this application is if somebody types in a directory we're going to print out its contents we're going to do that as well so, to that end, let's go ahead and get started with the case of a file. So, and now one other thing you should notice when we ran this, and let me run the, let me run the program again so you can see it. Is when I, oh, When I run this file, something else happens that's important. And that is, you notice it says file viewer, no file open. But if I go file viewer, and I hit the go button here, you can see the absolute path of the file in the file system. That's a useful piece of information. In fact, this particular user of computers hates it when an application does not display the absolute path. It simply displays the file name. I consider that to be really annoying. I want to know right where that file is. Okay, so we're gonna we're going to change the title also 
when we select a file to the path, absolute path of that file. So let's go ahead and get started with the basic stuff. First of all, what are we going to need? We're going to need, I think what we're going to do here is we're going to put, we're going we're gonna to get a border pane out. Dot layout dot border pane. And we're going to stick that border pane on the top. I mean, stick that border pane in our scene, and on top, it's going to go the button, the quit button, the go button, and the text field. Those three things. Okay. Now, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to make an H box. Okay, H box. And the H box is going to go in the top of the border pane and that's how we're going to control the placement of the items going in there. Okay, so now we have a border pane and we have an H box. So let's go ahead and get that started because that's pretty straightforward stuff. Oops, get back here. So I'm going to say border pane. BP is new border pane. There's my border pane. Now the next thing I'm gonna do, why is that showing up there? That's odd. Okay, um, H box is a new H box. And now I'm gonna take the H box and stick it into the border pane. So I'm gonna say bp.setTop of H box. Okay, so now I have a place to put the button in the text field. The other thing I'm going to do is to take the border pane and stick it in my scene. So we'll make this anonymous scene object, put our border pane in it. That'll be enough size, I think. Okay. So, so far, we have a border pane in our primary. We have our H box in our border pane. Okay, we, we stuck it in the border pane. And, and so we've got the layout determined. So now let's go ahead and start thinking about the H box. Now, one thing I'm not going to want to do here is build all the controls for the H box in this one place. I don't necessarily want to do that. I'm going to farm that out to a function. Okay, oh, come on. Okay, I'm going to farm that out to a function. So, what I'm going to do is make a private helper method called build controls. And what we'll do is we'll pass the H box to it. The H box is a mutable object. So we will decorate the H box with everything we need. And then it will be in the top and it'll be ready to go. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to make this. We're going to make this build controls method right now. So I'm going to come downstairs here. Private avoid uh, build controls. We're not going to return anything. Okay. We also have the choice, by the way, we could actually return an H box with everything in it and set the top to that. That'll work too. But this will work just as well. So I've gone ahead and done that. So what do we need in here? We need a text field. 
this new text field. We need a button. Alright. And I should say empty parentheses after this or I'm going to get in trouble. So that's the second thing we need. And the third thing we need is a quit button. Now, before we go on, we need to go upstairs and do a little bit of importing. Okay, these are all controls. Text. Okay, we have button, we have text field. Yeah, so we added button and text field to our imports. It might be prudent at this juncture to compile and see what things look like. So I'm compiling. Whoops! Oh, I need it. I need for I need H boxes import. Oh, whoa! The import police. Oh, here's what I forgot to do. I forgot to change that. Hmm, hopefully that will palliate the angry gods it did. Let's see what it looks like. Ooh, I need to leave that C off, so I run it. Okay. Bam. Ooh, I don't see anything yet. I wonder why that is. Okay, let's click that away. So things, something's not up to snuff. Let's see if we can figure out what it is. Make sure that we're doing everything we should be doing. There's my HBox. Build controls of HBox. Oh, yes. I made these lovely controls. But the thing I didn't do... This is easy to forget. That gives me an observable list and lists you can add all to. And I'm gonna add them in this order. Text field, go button, quit button. All right, now let's recompile that. Oh, yes. Oh, come on, dot Java. I'm gonna make an alias because this gets to be a pain in the keyster after a while. Ah, uh, yes. So it's compiling, it's running. Oh, look! Here's our text field. Okay. But nothing happens yet because we haven't uh, activated any of these widgets. But so far, so good. We have, we have the layout. Now, I guess the other thing you might want is what are you going to put in here? We need an area for text, and you can probably guess what that thing is called. In Jeopardy, that would be stupid questions for 200. Let's go ahead and make that happen. I don't even have the quit button working yet. I'll get that working too. So here's what we're going to do. Is we need a text area. That's an area into which you put text. So that's what we're going to put in the center. Okay, so we took care of our H box. Now we're going to say bp.setCenter. Okay. And I need to make a text area. Let me do that up here. All right. And then I'm going to put TA in here. And one thing I'm going to do to my text area. We don't want people to modify what's in there. So we're going to set ed its editable method to be false. Okay, so here we're getting the text area. We're sticking it in. And we've got it taken care of. All right. Um, let's see what it looks like. Oh, 
I'm gonna do this. Now, if you have a Mac, you can do this. Don't put spaces around the equal sign. Otherwise, you'll get mysterious error messages. Sadly, in Windows, you don't have this. So I can go comp like that. Okay, I knew. Ooh, the import police. So it's got to be, yep. Yes, the import police became angry and they took out their ire on us in the form of an error message. And now I'm going to run this. Isn't it lovely? Aliases are lovely things. Look, you have a text area. And you can't type in it. Because I have turned off that text area's ability to accept text. Okay, beautiful. Now there's a couple of other little pieces of errand that we could do at this juncture. One is, let's go down here and activate our quit button because that's a cheap and easy thing to do why don't we do that dot uh, set on action oh uh, okay so there we go our quit button's working so now we have um, we got some work to do. All right, we do have some work to do because we now have this go button. So it's going to need go button is going to need <clears throat> some kind of set on action. So I'm going to say, okay, we're going to have some set on action. And this is a multi-line lambda. So I'm going to go like this. And if you've never heard of this before, this little emoticon on the bottom, <coughs> that's called the sad Santa because here's his beard, here's his frown, there's his sad eyes. And if you remember to put the sad Santa, it'll keep you out of trouble. So to keep the length of this video manageable, what we're going to do is stop here and next time we're going to get the go button to work because that's going to involve a fairly complex sequence of events, much of which involves file, input, output. So I will see you next time and uh, we'll make that happen.